Hi there, my name is Scott Register. I'm Director of Product Management here at Breaking Point Systems, and today I am going to introduce you to our new LTE lab. So when I log in, I just select Labs. The last selection here at the bottom is LTE. This will open up our configuration screen. A uh, brief bit of introduction, you'll see here at the top right we have an LTE device diagram. This shows you what the device uh, or the network layout looks like and in case you're new to the LTE testing world, you can just select a device, click on it, and we have pop-up help that tells you not only about that device but also about all of the configuration fields on the screen that relate to it. So this is very helpful, especially in running your first few tests if you don't know exactly what goes where. Now, the first thing to actually configure over here are the simulated elements. So these are the parts of the LTE network that Breaking Point will be emulating. The first thing to fill in here is the number of UEs. This is the number of end devices. These could be smartphones or wireless cards and laptops uh, that you want to bring onto your network. Let's say I want to do a pretty big test. I want a million UEs. The next field here is the number of bearer channels. Now, in the LTE world, you have always one default bearer channel plus up to 10 additional dedicated bearers. In uh, many deployments, three is kind of a typical number, uh, the one default plus two additional de dedicated channels, so we'll set that up for here. The next two fields we'll enter are unique identifiers for the UEs in the network. The first is the IMSI, or International Mobile Subscri Subscriber Identity. This is basically the SIM card identifier. So we will generate one of these for every UE, uh, starting with the number of you, that you specify, and we will just generate them sequentially. The next is the MSISDN. This is, uh, this is a unique identifier for each subscription in the mobile network. Now, the values for these two fields, again, we generate them sequentially, will need to be entered in the HSS if you're using one uh, so that there is uh, matching subscriber uh, information for all of your UEs. The next field, or access point name, is an identifier uh, for the GSM carrier network to which the UEs connect. All the UEs share the same value in this test and the string here specifies what type of network connection to create. The next field is the aggregate bandwidth for all of the UEs in the test. Maybe we want a really slow test down at only 10 meg, or we may need 100 meg, a gig, or even a 10 gig aggregate test. Here we just enter the value. Now the breaking point Firestorm CTM can sustain up to roughly 1700 new host registrations per second on the S1 interface. This is enough to overwhelm many uh, EPC devices, especially if you're using something like an MME emulator, which may have more limited performance. Here in the host per second field, I can set a value that my MME can support to make sure that it functions correctly. Each UE in the network has a secret key. These are identifiers, again unique for each UE, that are used in conjunction with an operator variant to form the basis for other identification computations down the road. Finally, we select the application profile. Here I have pre-selected the breaking point mobile user profile, which has some typical applications for UE devices, but I have no limitations there. I can create my own, or Breaking Point supplies a number of profiles out of the box, which are based on extensive research working with our carrier partners. So maybe for this one, I'll pick our North American weekday mix. Again, this can have any combination of you know, web, email, SIP, Facebook, just pick your application, put them in a profile, and you are off and running. This ability to layer real application traffic over the GTP signaling and encapsulation protocols is part of what makes Breaking Point Solution unique in the market. The next configuration here is the eNode bees, or uh, cell phone towers, basically. So we can create up to 4,000 of these in a test, 
Maybe for this test I'll do something a little more limited, say 250. Now it turns out that in most of our customer testing, the unique information per you know, B is really not that interesting. So we don't make you go individually configure each, uh, each cell tower. You just tell us how many you want, the network that they're going to be on, the net mask of that network, uh, and then a shared gateway IP DN and DNS information for all of the eNode Bs. The only other field that you need to specify is a starting IP address. So maybe in this test I want, I don't know, only 100 cell phone towers. Now, the next piece to configure is the MME. In this particular test lab, we are assuming that you already have an MME, and we're emulating all the pieces around that. Uh, we have other operational modes where we can emulate the MME as well. If you need to add another one, you can either type in a host name or IP address here. Click here, and it's added to your network. You can have a large number of MMEs, although most networks only have a few. The next piece to configure is the public LAN mobile network identification information, which consists of a mobile country code and a mobile network code. These are unique per carrier. Finally, here on the right, we configure um, the internet side of the equation. In this diagram and in mobility networks, this is labeled the PDN, but many of us with a data background will call this the internet. So here we, uh, this is where we'll set up the servers that your UEs are talking to, you know, their Facebook or email or SIP or other servers. Again, you can supply these servers yourself or have us emulate them. And in most cases, the particulars of, you know, IP address per different type of server are really not that important for the purposes of your test. So you can just tell us the basic networking information, starting IP address, network and net mask, and we'll, we'll create them for you. The only thing you need to enter here is uh, the number of hosts that you want to emulate out there and the virtual router IP address of, uh, of the CTM itself. Here at the bottom, I decide how long I want my test to run. Maybe I want to do a five minute test. And then I can save the test, save it under a different name, or click here to run the test. And that's it. We're done setting up a complete LTE emulation environment. And uh, it was really pretty straightforward. It only took us a few minutes, very little effort. We could just accept most of the default values and be good to go right out of the chute. When we showed our new LTE capabilities and lab to our customers, they were very happy that we we're going to have such complete LTE capability um, as they're just starting to do their testing for their LTE deployments. But then they said, hey, you know what, that's great. Can you help us out on the 3G side? Because we have all these same challenges, large number of devices, uh, massive scalability, realistic user traffic. We've got all those problems in the 3G world as well. And so we went back and we added uh, some additional 3G capabilities uh, to help out with that. Now we don't have the dedicated screen, but I want to show you just how easy it is to set up a, a 3G test. Uh, in this case, I'll be emulating both the GGSN and the SGSN and putting real user traffic over the GTP tunnels between them. This is the type of test that, uh, let's say, a lawful intercept or other DPI vendor might need to, uh, to make sure that they can inspect that kind of encapsulated mobile traffic. So the first thing I will do is come to our network neighborhood selection and pick breaking point GTP. Actually, I'll, here, I'll show you what, the, uh, what all of the configuration options are should you need to change something for yourself. Here we configured the SGSM. So you see many of the fields, actually many of the fields from the LTE configuration are, uh, are the same or similar here. If you needed to emulate multiple SGSNs, you could just list the IP addresses here in this screen. Now, just as we have the SGSN screen, you can come here and configure the GGSN. Now, right now, these are just the default values, which I can't change, but I could easily edit these and save them under a different name. 
Okay, so we'll go back to our test. So I'm going to choose the breaking point TTP network neighborhood that we just looked at. And then I want to add a test component. This is what lets me put my user traffic in the network. I've added an application simulator, and then I pick which, uh, you know, which apps I want. If I wanted to go for max bandwidth, I could pick our preset. I can easily define my own uh, mix here, or I can pick a predefined mix such as one of our you know, North American uh, wireless carrier mixes. Say apply the changes. Now, to run the test and actually place the traffic on the network, all I have to do is say save and run. Scott's 3G test. We will first initialize the test. This is where we set up all of the uh, applications and users and get the test ready to execute. And once my initialization phase is over, the test starts running. Here, I can look at my real-time stats and see the applications that are running and see that they are successfully being established. And we know that these are being established over my GTP tunnels. I can look at interface statistics and see how many frames per second and how much bandwidth is being sent over this test. Now, a single Firestorm CTM can generate approximately 13 gig of encapsulated GTP traffic over a single port pair. I'm using uh, an older card with one gigabit interfaces, and so obviously it's not gonna run at over a gigabit per, uh, per direction. I believe this test is set up for 60 seconds. And so at the end of this test, we'll be able to see our specific GTP reporting that lets you understand better the operation of the GTP components of the network. Although, again, in this test, you may have really just been interested in intercepting and processing the traffic going between the GGSN and SSGN. Click on our report button. We pop up the live view of the report. I can come here to statistics and see things like, uh, well, I had 253 hosts in this test, so that will correspond to the number of tunnels that were established. I can also things of, see information about uh, GTP message rates and the number of tunnels that were set up per interface. All right, that concludes our LTE and 3G overview. Please let us know if there are other topics you would like for us to discuss. Thanks. Bye-bye.